What can we do to reverse global warming? Become aware of the solutions and think about the actions you can take as you listen to how we are drawing down in Pennsylvania. Hello, this is Anna from Penn State Brandywine, wrapping up this podcast mini series on drawing down in Pennsylvania, with the final episode focusing on hope. My goal with these podcasts was twofold. First, I wanted to help people understand the concept of drawdown, the point at which levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere stop climbing, and then steadily decline, ultimately reversing global warming. I also wanted to highlight individuals and organizations in the state of Pennsylvania that are working towards solutions in Project Drawdown's eight sectors: building in cities, electricity generation, food, land use, materials and waste, ocean, transportation, and women and girls. Through my interviews, I learned about the creative and innovative approaches in Pennsylvania to reverse global warming. I also heard messages of hope that each and every one of us and the actions we take will provide solutions to our current climate challenges. Listen for yourself to these voices, sharing a positive vision for the future. I look around and I see so many solutions, so many technologies and practices that we already have, that are already working. And I also look around and see so many people who care and so many ways to move those solutions forward. And I think when you bring all of those together, the solutions themselves, the people who care and our means of accelerating those solutions, that's really where you know I have a sense of possibility. And I won't say that people are starting to shift to the term climate crisis or climate emergency, and they're doing that for good reason, because that is really the situation that we're facing. And I think that can be scary. It can create grief and anger and fear. And all of those things are really reasonable. And I would say I hold all of those, perhaps sadness most intensely. And also, I think at the same time, we can have a sense of possibility and a sense of courage. And I want to make sure that people don't feel like you have to be hopeful all the time to be able to continue participating in creating change and continuing to take action. Sometimes it's the action itself that gives you the greatest sense of hope. I still believe, and we still believe, that investment in public transportation is extremely important to mitigate the effects of climate change. And we're continuing to look at ways on how to not only improve our service, to make it more attractive to people to ride, but also what we can do for our own operations to look at how we can reduce our impact. So I think what gives me hope is that we are just moving to a cleaner economy in general. I think the rhetoric and the sort of anti-science attitude about climate change, particularly in the U.S. political arena right now, it can be distracting and disheartening. But at the end of the day, Our global economy is getting cleaner, and it's not happening fast enough, but we are seeing progress. Well, if I just do it, then, you know, we're going to be neutralizing the the carbon footprint. If others like me start doing it, then we're starting to make a bigger and bigger impact. And if everybody does it, then we can start reversing some of the damage that we've caused to this planet. And we can, I guess, help our planet survive for my grandchildren and their grandchildren. And it's really inspiring to see all the research and excitement around sustainable agriculture. And then as a student, it's exciting to see other young people who are also realizing the implications of their food consumption and are choosing to dedicate the rest of their academic careers and 
than their professional careers to studying and understanding and bettering and pushing forward sustainable agriculture. I think the biggest sign of hope that I've seen through my work with Feeding Pennsylvania is the commitment from both the state and federal level to funding programs that give us access to surplus agricultural products. It's nice to see our lawmakers identifying the fact that we need to provide access to fresh, nutritious food to people facing hunger. And I think secondly, it's been incredible to see the leaders in agriculture who have been supporting us through sign-on letters and visits to our elected officials saying that they want to be partners in this and they identify that it is important for them to be partners in making sure that people have access to products. So I think as policymakers, understanding the importance of greenhouse gas emission reductions, I think that's something that grows every day. And I think that is just gonna help any remaining barriers, possibly even some incentives for these projects to be built and operated will continue. I think just seeing how many scientists and congressional representatives care about science and care about science policy. And especially with the scientists care about communicating their data and what they're working on to the general public or to policymakers gives me a lot of hope for the ocean and for climate and for science policy really in general. I think that just, I was really encouraged to see how many other scientists and people out there care about the same issues that I care about. We know what the problem is. We've also been doing work for decades, you know, 30, 40 years of climate studies to see trends. We know what the problem is. We know that burning of fossil fuels and increasing these atmospheric gases, these greenhouse gases, is causing our planet to change and causing our oceans to warm up and to become more acidic. We have the, the knowledge of the cause. So then it's up to us to find a solution. You know, if we just were starting now, we were seeing these changes and these increased in storm intensities and these droughts and flooding and the weird weather that's happening around the planet and all these corals bleaching and dying and all these things that were happening and coastal erosion. If we didn't understand it, if we were just looking at it now for the first time, it would be terrifying because we wouldn't know. But we have records, we understand the problem. It's like we've gone to the doctor with some terrible disease and the doctor has said to us, we know what this disease is. You at least have an answer and now you can try to go out and find a cure. So we have an answer. We know what's wrong. And we have the intelligence and the infrastructure to fix it. We just have to be willing to do it. It's not going to be easy. But we have the tools to be able to reverse some of these effects that we've caused. And that does give me hope. This concludes the podcast miniseries, Drawing Down in Pennsylvania. My own hope is that you share this podcast with others, engage in conversations, and take your own actions to continue the movement towards a better climate future for planet Earth.